Okay, so here we are. Sorry, not a typical intro. Uh, this is a last minute video and I just wanted to come on and uh, share a few thoughts uh, with you um, on this day. So uh, again, uh, thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I had a, a really sort of special time earlier uh, in worship where I put on a few worship songs and, and just began to praise the Lord. And um, I, for me, I think that really came as a result of being vexed by something I had experienced earlier in the day. And it just reminded me how grateful I am to, uh, through no effort of my own, right, or through no works of my own, able to walk in the grace of God. And walking in the grace of God, what I mean by that is being able to be of Uh, so the Bible says that he's not given us a spirit of fear, right? But of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And, and those three gifts, those three attributes of the spirit, to have power, to have love for one another, and to have a sound mind is truly a very, very valuable thing in this day and age, especially with the ongoing deception that uh, so much of the world has fallen under and so if they don't have power love and a sound mind what do they have well they certainly don't have power to walk uprightly and so therefore people are walking in sinful lifestyles they don't have love right there is animosity hate and judgment toward others and they don't have a sound mind because they believe all the fear propaganda that is going out there so they're full of fear and they're reacting out of that fear and so I, I was reminded and I'll give that example in just a moment but I was reminded about how how fortunate I am again through the grace of God to to really be on the outside right in, in more ways than one being on the outside to really see okay wow you know, the Bible says that um, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And it is not what goes into a man that defiles him, the Bible says. It's what comes out of him, right? Murders, adulteries, blasphemies, all kinds of just heinous things that are really contrary to the Spirit of God, right? It's a different spirit. So I'm at a family gathering tonight, right? It's a family gathering. And, and I was basically reminded why I don't partake in a lot of these holiday gatherings because they usually tend to be filled with carnality, with strife, with just no peace. Why? Because, which constantly continues to prove my point that these holidays are not sanctified by God, right? People don't come together to glorify God because if they did, they would look much different than they do right and so let's um call a spade a spade and and say that um this truly is a time of revelry and 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 that it's best you know materialism and um and so i just want to strip away you know the lie that family gatherings and you know they can be when when people who are filled with the spirit you know want to come together and enjoy a meal at this time i mean if they can get peace out of it and and not be um you know overtaken by this the, you know the spirit of materialism and drunkenness and all that then i think that's great you know but that really isn't the the case for for most households and family gatherings it just turns out to be a drunken mess or you know, use your imagination. But here I am at a gathering tonight where um, there was only a few of us, right? People are scattered. Things are, you know, things are not what they used to. As you get older, you know, people die. Things change over time in family gatherings. But um, so, I, again, I found myself in an environment that was just very contrary to what I consider to be appropriate and peaceful and loving. And when you're in an environment that is contrary to all those, all you really have is this sort of fake, this fake 
outward expression of, you know, okay, well, we all, you know, we all love each other, but we're not going to show it. We're here to break bread and partake one another, but we're going to bicker about all these things and insult one another. And, and, and I feel like what God really wants to give us is maturity, maturity. You ever, have you ever told someone, Hey, you know what? You need to grow up right the way you're acting is is inappropriate and it's rude and all this and that and so here you know you know you're surrounded by grown people people who should know better and yet because they don't have this understanding that the spirit of god gives them to to walk uprightly and to treat one another with with love and dignity and respect and all these things um you know you think well, this is a shame. You know, why are people acting out this way? And it's precisely that. You know, it's it's almost it seems like it's rare to be able to come together um, in true unity. And I think then that those kinds of gatherings that are sanctified, where people are experiencing, excuse me, where people are experiencing peace, love, fellowship, right? Um, and you know what, when you, when you're in an environment like that with people who are like-minded, who have that spirit, who are seeking peace, the Bible says, seek peace, seek righteousness, seek all these things. Um, you're not going to have any problems. On the contrary, you're going to be blessed. Don't you want to be blessed? Don't you want to leave better than when you came out? Right? It's better to give them to receive. So I love the, the idea that we can have gatherings and we can bring stuff bring food or you know whatever you want to bring bring a gift i don't know but the fact is is that there is another spirit in man that desperately needs to be redeemed and that double minded that second person that jekyll and hyde if you will when it's not crucified it is always present behind just behind the eyes that spirit who is a person full of envy and bitterness. And uh, there's a term in Romans that the Bible calls uh, fake love. And uh, as a matter of fact, you know what? I want to get that term for you because it's really important to understand what the Bible's saying there in Romans. So let me turn there real quick. You'll hear a few uh, page turns. It's in Romans chapter 12, and it says... There it is. Let love be without dissimulation, right? And I looked up that word, and it was basically, don't let your love be attached to something that is not genuine. It's not authentic. It's not, it's not this compassionate kind of love that you have for one another because you want to serve one another. You know, let, le let love be without that stuff right and and truly god is love and we can't have love we can't know love unless we're really really connected to the vine and um uh, again i was at one of those gatherings tonight where someone walked in with a mask and of course this person's vaccinated right and i felt like what that person was saying to the rest of us because i think most of us in this small gathering tonight were not vaccinated uh, of course including myself uh, I am vehemently opposed to um, injecting myself with an unknown, irreversible um, substance, which cannot be trusted and should not be trusted. Um, and so this person comes in wearing a mask, a cousin of mine, and what she was saying without saying a word was that you all are posing a risk to me and this is my way of saying, you know what, I'm vaccinated and I'm not going to let you people get me sick and all that. And so there's talk in the Bible about that a man's foes will be those of his own household. Right. Um, what, what does the Bible also say about um, if a house, <clears throat> how can a house stand if it's if it's divided? So it's 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 kind of a, uh, a contradiction that people come together and. Um, when there is clear division in the room, right? And so again, I'm saying all this because first and foremost, I was I was grieved and I was saddened 
that I couldn't experience some of those gatherings that I used to have with my family when I was growing up as a kid. And of course, all that carnality was always present. It, it will always be present in, in holidays uh, because, you know, whether people not want to admit it, that's actually why they're getting together. It has nothing to do with God, believe me. And so, um, and so that's why we have the church. And I'm not just talking about, you know, showing up to a service because sometimes very little fellowship can happen in a service, right? You show up, you listen to a sermon, you greet a few people, and then you go home. That's not fellowship. It should and could be more than that, but the churches have really fallen under some of these some of these guidelines where the Holy Spirit is not even allowed to move, right? Because they're really not having the type of fellowship that is designed for um, people to really um, experience the love of God with one another. And so what what God has ordained are the type of gatherings where you come together with like-minded believers. You know this person has integrity. You know they have power, love, and a sound mind. And so you want to be that around that person because as iron sharpens iron, so does a friend sharpen the counsel of of the countenance rather of his friends. So we need to be with those types of people. Now you'll hear a lot of talk, you know, from a, you know, humanistic perspective about, you know, drop the negative friends and, you know, hang around these people more. Well, that's, a, that's a basically, that's a universal principle. That's not just, you know, that type of, of, of strategy with who you hang out with is not, you know, the humanists and the positive thinkers didn't come up with that, right? It just means that you can't have fellowship. Light can ha not have fellowship with darkness, right? We read about that in um, Corinthians, right? Where it talks about, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So that goes a long way in improving what God has designed for us to experience and how it really works. Those, those, those pieces fit together when you are around believers, not unbelievers. If you want to have a genuine Holy Spirit time of fellowship, right? I mean, that is the purpose of the church. So we don't have to rely on these Christmas gatherings to get that because you're not going to get it right you're going to get gluttony materialism drunkenness you're going to get everything but the spirit of god i don't care how many uh baby jesus statues you have in your home or how many christmas songs you're playing okay um it's just not god honoring in my opinion and so you can you know celebrate that any way you want but tonight's exhortation for me and for you is to be grateful, to truly be grateful for the immeasurable gift that God has given us, His Holy Spirit. And really that is kind of a two-way street in a way because it really only benefits us if we're truly dedicated to pursuing the calling and the life that God has for us. And we have to be uh, assertively pursuing peace and righteousness, right? by constantly having our, our minds renewed. So that way you instantly can identify that something that does not belong in the environment that you need to create in order to maintain that peace. And so again, tonight here I am and, and I'm, I'm surrounded by this and, and inside I'm, I'm so saddened that people have not woken up and have not grown up and truly experienced what it means to be born again. And so now when I hear people saying, well, basically actually acting con contrary to what they say they believe and then, and then seeing how they talk to people and treat people, I'm thinking, you know what? There's no possible way you could truly be born again. I have a cousin who I overheard tonight taking the Lord's name in vain, saying, you know, JC. And I'm thinking... How could you be born again? I just don't get it, right? We all fumble and, 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 and stumble with our lips, right? But 
I can tell the difference between something that is actually a part of your your spirit and, and, and part of your regular vocabulary. And I'm thinking, wow, that, that truly is, it's really just sad and it's tragic that, um, you know, here you are, you know, at this family gathering and you take in the Lord's name in vain. And, and it really, I can really imagine now when Moses came down from the Mount, how disgusted he was at what the people who were called out with him, what they had become. And yet there were those in that camp who refused to go along and resurrect this golden calf to worship it because they had given up on Moses. They say, as for this Moses, we don't know what became of him. You know, let's go ahead and do our own thing and begin to just have wild, crazy parties. They basically had a giant Christmas party is what they had and lived it up. Meanwhile, there were others in the same camp who said, we are not going to partake in that sin. We are going to be, we are going to abstain. We are going to remain separate and we are going to wait for Moses to come down from that mount. And sure enough, he came. And all those people who had partaken in that Christmas party, if you will, were, were rebuked or destroyed. So it needs to be taken quite seriously that we cannot serve two masters, folks. We will be devoted to one and hate the other. Or we will be lukewarm. Which is it? Lukewarmness, walking in the middle of the road, is a very dangerous place to be. Instead, let's find the narrow path that God has for his people. That's where safety is. That's where safety is. It's not on the broad road where everyone else is. And so, if you have not yet gotten to a place in your faith, where you can say, I truly have the peace of God. I hate evil. I am not consumed by the cares of this life. Rather, you know what, Lord? I want to focus on you. I want to be devoted to maintaining peace. I want to have power, love, and a sound mind. I don't want to walk around with a mask and look like an, uh, an enslaved idiot. One day, family will betray family. It's prophesied in the Bible. And we're already seeing that type of behavior happen when people come in with masks on in your own family and say, without saying anything, you are a threat to me. And truly, these people are lost and they're headed down a road toward deception. Where that same propensity that has a fear and a love for their own lives, that they will do anything to maintain it. I was just reading the other day, J Jesus said, He that will seek to save his life will lose it. But he that would lose his life for my sake and the gospels, he will find it. That truly is the word of the day. Let's not be so careful for our lives to do anything to be able to hold on to this temporal existence that we lose sight of what really matters. We are coming up on a new year, 2022, and it is our calling, privilege, and responsibility as believers to stay separate in your heart and in your mind. Always be separate. The Bible says, come out from among them, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, God says. I'm telling you, God is a God of separation meaning that he will always call out a people for himself and for his name. And if you can't say, 
I'm on God's side, I'm on this side, I will not compromise, then there's only, there's only one choice left for you. You will be with the rest of the world and they will drink of the cup of the wine of the wrath of God as it mentions in Revelation. Don't be that group. Don't fall into judgment where everlasting fire and torment will be. No, instead, we need to humble ourselves and say, God, keep me, deliver me from evil. Isn't that the Lord's prayer? Deliver me from evil, Lord. So I thank you for watching this. I hope you got something out of it. Let's pray and believe and walk by faith that God is going to continue to keep us safe and nothing, amen, will separate us from the love of God. And no matter what, do not compromise. Do not compromise. God is our provider. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you, he says. If there's something that the world is pressuring you to do, don't give in to it. Even if, you, even if it costs you something. Because that's what the Bible says. You need to count the cost before we decide to take up that cross and follow God. Because the moment we lay down that cross for the threat of losing our jobs or losing this or losing that, we have lost that battle that we need to keep fighting against Satan. And that's just the truth. Amen. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Crosstalk. Take care.